Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to take our first hot topic, and that is foreign embassies owe uh, $5.3 million ground rent. FCTA clamps down on defaulters. And to talk on these is Dr. Lome for a political scientist. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. I don't know, can you see me there? Um, yeah, because I can start my video from here. Thank you for having me. I, I, I do hope you can uh, uh, see me. Um, I, I, I think um, the um, weekend uh, administration of the Federal Capital Territory is uh, doing quite a lot um, in an attempt to recover um, the status of uh, the Federal Capital Territory. You know, the master image of uh, the territory has suffered uh, a great deal uh, in the last uh, two decades, particularly the last um, one decade. Uh, it got to a point where many people were really asking, do we really have a minister here? You know, but uh, we can change in all that. And um, it, what, what he's saying about um, the ground rents and, um, you know, for all the buildings here in Abuja, I think is just very, very, very fundamental. Because um, there are several things happening here. Uh, it, 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 the political elites um, using uh, Abuja lands and uh, buildings uh, to launder money, tie down uh, money and all that, and they are not uh, paying. If you come to Abuja and take a tour, you discover that um, nearly half of the buildings you have here are uninhabited. Then you ask yourself, why was the building uh, put up in the first place? Then coming to the embassies, I think uh, the, it's, it's rather uh, unfortunate that um, the embassies uh, would be caught in uh, this kind of um, mess, if I am permitted to use that word. Um, again, uh, I want to believe that it's a matter of uh, communication uh, gaps um, the, between uh, the FCTA administration and um, the embassies. I'm sure that uh, if uh, they um, have been communicating effectively, putting them on notice and all that uh, quietly through official channels of communication, this uh, embarrassing moment uh, wouldn't have arisen. And um, they ought to um, know better, as far well as I am concerned. And uh, the, the, the embassies, um, I really don't want to believe that uh, they would want to be in default. Maybe one or two would um, uh, be in, in a difficulty of a settling a, a such um, outstandings. But uh, I believe that on the whole, generally, uh, the, the, the embassy say would pay. How much are we talking about here, anyway? You know, $5.3 million, you know, to us as Nigerians may appear quite big. But uh, uh, it, it's not uh, a big deal for most of uh, those countries. So what I, I want to see is um, a better communication moving forward. And um, they, they, they can't afford to default. Uh, because the UK, I know, will not stop at anything until he gets uh, the money. It doesn't matter who the office is a uh, god. Even if it is uh, the villa that is going, you'll be surprised the UK will be breathing down their neck until they do the need for So the embassies should uh, spare us uh, this embarrassing moment and they rise to the occasion and do what they ought to have done a long time. And they, since they know that this is a uh, normal what they do annually. Do they really have to wait until um, uh, the minister begins to threaten um, fire and brimstone? They don't need to wait. They, 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 these are routine um, 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 uh, uh, liabilities which they must meet. And uh, since it is not optional and uh, um, is part of uh, the contractual agreement between uh, the embassies and the, the FCTA, or, or what you call FCT administration, they they, they should know, and they are, they, it should be somebody's uh, shadow in uh, each of the embassies to uh, see to such uh, obligations that they are met. 
I'm there. We have the, any, any embassy or even two or three that uh, can't um, rise to eat immediately because of uh, some challenges with their home countries. Can always, uh, uh, you know, write uh, to the Honorable uh, Minister and um, ask for time. And um, for me, it's, it's quite, it's quite um, unnecessary, very, very avoidable. And they, they, ought, to, they ought to do better. And, um, uh, and nobody should blame him. We care for this. Um, he, he, he is uh, getting them to do what they ought to do. And uh, they shouldn't have waited to be reminded. Uh, well, uh, in, in diplomatic cycles, like I said, communication is key. Um, how were such messages are passed? Key. Um, uh, probably it shouldn't have been made um, a press uh, or media issue. Um, at this uh, level. But again, nobody knows uh, how many uh, times uh, they have uh, been um, reminded before uh, it came to the notice of uh, the media that uh, the embassies are going. So um, uh, we, we, we need to um, get both sides to uh, live up to um, their diplomatic uh, responsibilities. The embassies should pay, and where they can't, they should um, ask for time, and uh, if it is reasonable, the minister will certainly grant, even for the image uh, and good uh, relation uh, with um, uh, those countries. And uh, of course, uh, like I said, there ought to be uh, better communication. This thing ought not to be a media, a media issue, uh, exactly. because of. Um, uh, the fact that uh, you have uh, countries uh, uh, involved, uh, their image, yeah, because uh, it, it smacks of uh, irresponsibility. It does appear that uh, they, 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 they take such things for granted. That is the kind of impression one gets. But I really do not think that it should be or that that is the case. Yeah, but because uh, a, lot of, a lot of people uh, think that this thing could have res been resolved you know, but like you said, nobody knows how many or how much of the back and forth we've had, uh, the FCTA has had with these uh, foreign embassies. But the fundamental question is, why did it even get to this point? Was it that they were asked to hold on? Was it that there was no uh, body appointed, like you said, that should be in charge of making sure that every of these embassies uh, live up to their expectation? Why did it get to this point? I don't know if that question has been answered already by the FCTA before this action is being carried out. Because, like you said, this is a, a national embarrassment for any country that will be held for owing uh, ground rents in any other country. And it, it could have been resolved without taking it to the press. Some people say that this is just a distraction because some people are pointing uh, fingers at the FCTA uh, because of the insecurity that is there and all that. And even now, today on the papers, it was that the FCTA or the FCT is becoming so dirty that people are getting worried. And now the administration has promised there will be monthly sanitation just to make sure that FCT looks the way it should look. So some people think this is a, a, a distraction so that people will not be asking the questions that are bothering them. Why is insecurity the way it is in Abuja? And why is Abuja as dirty as it is that it shouldn't have been that much? Do you think so as well, that Wike is just trying to uh, play to the gallery and distract people from the, the real issues in Abuja? I really don't think so, because um, on uh, insecurity, uh, Wike has uh, taken some concrete uh, steps, um, trying to wake uh, the area councils and uh, all that, trying to um, bring the, um, the um, residents of FCT to be alive to um, the insecurity challenge. Um, vigilantes are springing up here and there uh, with uh, active uh, support and prompting uh, by the Honorable Minister Wike. Um, but when it comes to um, hygiene and sanitation in FCT, it's been quite uh, embarrassing for quite some time now, for about a decade, Abuja. Abuja has uh, 
been uh, suffering an uh, image uh, problem. If you um, read the, the basic literature and see the master plan of Abuja, it was conceived to compare to any uh, modern city anywhere in the world. And uh, the setting out everything um, is um, pointing to it. And um, the idea is to um, also um, achieve a master image, you know, for the federal capital territory, uh, because here is uh, about the only city that Nigeria uh, had the opportunity to plan from the scratch. All the other cities in Nigeria, you know, weren't uh, really planned, and then uh, restructuring them has uh, always been a problem. But Abuja ought not to, you know, suffer from uh, that kind of problem. But then, if you look at um, sanitation in uh, the FCT, the environment is not um, really reflecting uh, that idea of Abuja and uh, a master image that will be able to compare to any other anywhere in the world. This is quite worrisome and uh, it's, it's not right. And uh, there is a whole agency here, Abuja Environmental Protection Agency, a whole agency, you know, uh, charged with uh, the responsibility of, uh, you know, keeping uh, Abuja clean. Uh, the monthly sanitation, well, maybe it will help, but I think that um, the, the agencies, what should uh, be reorganized if um, the head, the head and leadership of the place uh, are not um, up to up to it, then uh, something has to be done. And uh, I also know that uh, you have um, people, um, you have uh, consultants who work with the uh, the Abuja Protection, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, they help in uh, moving uh, the refuse from here and there. They, 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 you know, I really don't know whether they are uh, uh, properly engaged, promptly paid, because when you have such people that would um, take part of uh, the work of you, because when we talk about dirtiness, you know, environmental uh, challenges and all that, we are talking about uh, uh, the refuse not being removed and then um, or dumped in places where uh, they are not to be. And then uh, you will see uh, such a refuse springing up in uh, so many places and all that. It, it, um, uh, people generate uh, these things on a daily basis and then uh, there should be designated places where these things should be dumped and people uh, and those responsible will come and pack them. But those who pack, are they really paid? Are they properly paid? Because these are some of the things. If you don't pay them well and on time, they, they, they too will uh, relax and, and you know, say, we're not getting back at you. So I believe that these are some of the challenges that uh, Wike himself need uh, to uh, look into. Not just, not just uh, uh, re-establishing a monthly environmental uh, uh, sanitation. For me, I will even uh, suggest something more organized. There should be sanitary inspectors. You know, mm. we can should look in that direction. It's sanitary inspectors. In, in colonial days, that was how the white men kept everywhere clean. Sanitary inspectors. So it's not just a matter of monthly exercise. No, your environment must be clean 24 hours. So when they come and they find because they are, they are uh, coming will be random. You don't know when they will come and all that. But if uh, things are not right in your, uh, you know, in your surrounding and things like that, there is a fine you pay. When you pay such fine uh, once or twice, you will sit up. So you will discover that you, you need to go beyond monthly uh, exercise. Yes, it is good, but it's not sufficient. They need to do more. You know, I am proposing introduction of uh, uh, sanitary inspectors. It will create job in a federal capital territory and area councils to, to create job for thousands of youth. And uh, the answer is to ensure, you know, that the environment is, you know, sparkling clean because they, 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 they move around in gangs to look at the, the environment, the streets and all that to ensure that the things are just in order. 
So when you now move and you're seeing a sewage, you know, bubbling here and there, and, um, you know, uh, whose job is it to do that? Is uh, the, the environmental agency, which uh, uh, would uh, not uh, be prompt in a scene to uh, evacuation of uh, those uh, filled up uh, sewages. So we have a, 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 an environmental challenge here. There is no doubt about that. And there is need to do a holistic you know, uh, evaluation of the whole thing and uh, ensure that, like I said, the contractors are paid, that you introduce sanitary inspectors, and then, um, yes, go on with uh, the plan to reintroduce the monthly sanitation exercise, and then uh, do uh, uh, further uh, public enlightenment so that the citizens themselves uh, should take a, a additional responsibility of ensuring that they've dug their refuse at a designated uh, point and the uh, all that. Then you have these uh, Babambola, you know, people that move all over the estates and the buildings in Abuja, and then they are scavengers. They, they they go into into the refuse and then uh, in an attempt to find things of value to them, they scatter the whole thing and then in the process mess up the environment. They, they should be put in check also. I believe that um, whatever those people are looking for. There should be alternatives for it. Uh, and they, I really don't know because they are picking um, things that uh, at the end of the day um, may even be used to fake uh, products. And uh, if, if, if we need to look into their, their, their activities. The, the, the scavengers that you call babambolas, that's what we call them here, babambola. And they are active, they are everywhere in Abuja. And they, 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 are, they are part of a, a, the environmental degradation that we are talking about here. So these are some of uh, uh, my thoughts that I think uh, you know, would uh, help in you know, putting some of this things in perspective. Yeah, thank you yeah. very much. Well, yes, it, it, does, it does help. Um, monthly environmental sanitation exercise may not be the only solution. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, the pride that was instilled into Lagosians when there was a slogan called uh, Ekoni Baje, which means uh, uh, Lagos will not spoil or something like that. I don't understand Yoruba so much. It gave yeah. Lagosians so much pride that they wanted to do right. You go to Calabar, there was a time Calabar was the cleanest city in, in Nigeria. And Donald Duke, who was a governor then, yeah. just brought a slogan, uh, figured in Bakara, that means the Africa people or the Calabar people are the Oyibos of or, or the whites of this of, of Nigeria. So everybody began to behave like that, and they didn't litter the place. So we didn't have any cause for monthly environmental sanitation. If you even go out of this country, there was a, this, there was a time Texas was like the the worst city when it comes to littering, and there was a slogan: "Don't mess with Texas." That was a slogan targeted at um, between 18 and 35 year olds because they saw them as the people who littered the most. And it had a global, if, um, a national effect, so much so that litter was reduced uh, from, from whatever it was by 75% just by that slogan. So maybe our people should start thinking about a reorientation of the psyche of the people to make them feel That's on it. their own that they need to be neat enough to uh, take on yes, the responsibility that's... of a clean city. Well, thank you for yeah. your thoughts this morning, Dr. Mifo. Yeah. Thank you for your thoughts this morning. This is yeah, where we have to you. wrap up at this moment. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank to, you. Yeah, uh, to... So just one thing, I am not a political scientist. I am a social scientist. Mm. I am a social psychologist, mm. to be precise. OK. Yeah. We tie everything to politics these yes, days. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for that correction. <laughs> yes, and Thank especially having, having knowing that you just launched a, a non-governmental organization, Save Democracy and all that, you are, you are in it. We're opening it yeah. into this, all this show of politics. But thank you so much for the correction and Thank you. going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We've been talking to Dr. Lorme for um, a social scientist. Uh, that's how he just corrected us now. And he was talking to us from Abuja. We're talking about the fact that foreign embassies owe $5.3 million uh, 
uh, ground rent. Uh, so the FCTA clamps, is now clamping down on defaulters. And Indonesia alone is owing more than $2 million out of the $5.3 million. So um, let's see how that goes, and we hope that uh, it can be resolved amicably without this uh, national embarrassment going further than it has already gone. Like Dr. Lawmefo said, it shouldn't have even been a matter for the press. But let's see how it goes. We'll take a short break and return in a jiffy. Stay with us. <laughs>